السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله رب العالمين وأصلي وأسلم على سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الأقدة من لساني يفقه قولي رب زدنا علما رب زدنا علما رب زدنا علما نافعا آمين We are trying to understand the legacy of Ahlul Kitab from the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala their own scriptures the Bible and the history of the Jews in particular. Uh, the text which we are using for this is uh, the book of a great Muslim thinker and philosopher, Dr. Ismail Raji Al-Faruqi. The name of the book is Christian Ethics. We will take selected paragraphs and themes whenever we need uh, to understand or explain these points. In the previous session, we started our discussion with uh, the Hebrew racialism. We said the history of the Jews or the uh, religion of Judaism is a racialist religion. We also highlighted the difference between racism and racialism. Racialism is an ideology. Racism uh, can connote uh, a particular behavior of specific people. But racialism is an ideology in itself. We also highlighted the difference between Jews and Christians in the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The animosity of Jews is more severe than the Christians. And we explained the reasons. So the problem with the Hebrew religion or the Jews is that they have equated the value of being human with the value of uh, their political idea. This was the last point we discussed in the previous session. So your humanity is worthy when you carry that political idea, when you are member of a particular race. If you are not member of that race, your humanity is valueless. We said every ideology, every religion, has a particular bias towards the followers of that religion. This is everywhere. But the bias in Jewish religion is to the extreme or it has transgressed all limits. So for example, in Islam, in a Muslim rule, we don't believe the rights of a non-Muslim subject and a Muslim subject are equal. However, we believe in justice. If a non-Muslim is living under our rule, we will not oppress them. We will protect them, we will protect their families, and they have the rights. However, their rights are not equal to the rights of a Muslim, because the distribution of rights in Islam is based on the religion itself. And this may apply to all religions and ideologies, like a, the, the concept of citizenship. If you are a citizen of a particular country, you have more rights than a person who is uh, a non-citizen living in that country. Maybe for education, for medical purpose, for job. They don't have equal rights based on this concept of citizenship. So this applies to ideologies and also religions. However, this is something different. <clears throat> This is equating the value of being human with the value of carrying a particular political idea. If you're not a member of that race or you don't carry that particular idea, your value in being a human uh, does not carry any meaning. For this reason, they coined the term goyem non-Jews. Goyem is a non-Jew 
who does not belong to the same race and does not carry the same political idea. So he is less human. For, for this reason, when we heard the leaders of Israel, the foreign minister and others, uh, dehumanizing Palestinians and declaring them human animals, uh, it is based on their religion itself. It is based on their ideology. And we also said that the Jews who don't believe in this militant, separatist, non-universalist uh, ideology of Zionism, we appreciate them. So they have uh, interpreted their religion in a more logical manner or they have separated themselves from this extremist interpretation. And we saw the traditional religious Jews uh, standing for the cause of Palestine and participating in the protests. They are praiseworthy. We can say they are more near to the original message of Moses, original message of uh, Musa alayhi salam. But this is what their religion has become. That's why the God is their God, focused on the children of Israel. History is about children of Israel. God is their God. He is not the universal God of all mankind. And this context, if you understand it properly, and after that you read the ayat of the Quran about Jews, these ayat will ma make complete sense. For example, ayah 18 from Surah Al-Ma'idah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وقالت اليهود والنصارى نحن أبناء الله وأحباؤه قل فلم يعذبكم بذنوبكم بل أنتم بشر ممن خلق يغفر لمن يشاء ويعذب من يشاء ولله ملك السماوات والأرض وَلِلَّهِ مُلْكُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَمَا بَيْنَهُمَا وَإِلَيْهِ الْمَصِيرِ Allah says, But the Jews and Christians say, We are the children of Allah and His Beloved. We are children of Allah. Children of Allah does not mean physically. It means the same idea of race, racism. We are the children of Allah. We are His Beloved. Allah and God is focused on us. Allah says, say, then why does he punish you for your sins? Rather, you are human beings from among those he has created. See, subhanAllah. Reflect on these words. Allah didn't say, rather, you are his slaves like others. Allah said, you are human beings. Bal antum bashar, bashar, human beings. Why did Allah say, bal antum bashar? They did not claim to be angels. When they said, when the Jews say, said, the children of Israel said that we are children of Allah and his beloved. They did not mean that we are angels. If they had claimed to be angels and Allah said you are not angels, you are human beings, it would be correct. Why did Allah say, Bal antum basharum mimman khalaq? Rather you are human beings from among those he has created. Because they equated the value of being children of God or, or, particular, or chosen people, chosen race with the value of being a human. Your humanity is worthy only when you belong to children of Israel, when you carry the same political idea of Israel. Otherwise, your, your humanity is of no worth. We don't say that as Muslims. We say if you accept Islam, you will succeed in dunya and akhirah. And this is the path to success. But if you don't want to accept Islam in dunya, you will face punishment in akhirah. But we cannot force anyone to, to accept Islam. We don't say a non-Muslim is a less human being and a Muslim is a better human being more, or he is more human. Of course, a Muslim is a better human being, but a Muslim is not a more human and a non-Muslim is a less human. He is also a human being. And we have been commanded to deal with them, with non-Muslims, if they are living with us or we are living with them or in a society, pluralistic society, we deal with each other, with justice, with kindness, as long as they are not fighting us, as long as they are not our, our enemies, as long as we are not in a war with them. We don't say they are less human beings. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, La ikraha fi deen. There is no compulsion in religion. You can guide them. You can give them da'wah. You can teach them. You can explain to them. You cannot force them to accept Islam. It is their choice. They don't want to accept Islam. They can live with us. They can practice their religion. They can even engage in haram things which are haram for us. They can engage in these haram things between themselves, not with Muslims. They can consume alcohol within themselves. They can buy and sell alcohol in their society within themselves without making it public. They can eat pork, sell and buy pork within, within themselves. Allah has given this. This is agreed upon between scholars. So we don't say they are less humans. If you don't accept Islam, you are animals. We don't say that. What we say is, you will not succeed on the last day. This is the path of success in dunya also. If you want to be a good human being, accept Islam, accept the values of Islam, practice this religion which has come from Allah, this is the only way to attain success in dunya and akhirah. If you don't want to, this is your choice. You're free. We cannot force you. You're still human beings. We will deal with you as human beings. But with Jews, it is different. If you are not from us, you're not you're you're less human beings. Or you're you're not human beings at all. You're goyer. And the political idea that if you're not with us, you're against us. We don't say that. If, if you don't accept Islam, you're against us. No, this is not our ideology. Those who are against us and fighting us, we'll fight them back. Jihad is a uh, very important hukum in Islam. Alhamdulillah. Whoever dies defending his honor is a shaheed. Whoever dies defending his wealth is a shaheed. Whoever dies defending his property is a shaheed. A Muslim is not a coconut. We will fight back if you fight us. You are not fighting us. You are living with us in peace. We will not deal with you as animals. You are human beings. We are human beings. We will deal with you with kindness. Alhamdulillah. This is Islam. Because why? Why? Because Allah is the God of everyone. Allah is not the God of only Muslims. Allah is the God of the Christians, the Jews, the Hindus, the Buddhists, atheists, everyone. And subhanallah, this last ummah is the ummah of Muhammad. Everyone is ummah of Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Jew is ummah of Muhammad. Christian is ummah of Muhammad. Atheist is ummah of Muhammad. Hindu is ummah of Muhammad. Buddhist is ummah of Muhammad. All types of non-Muslims. Agnostics, atheists are Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam because Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the last and final messenger. However, those who accept the message of Muhammad, they are Ummatul Istijaba. They have a higher status. They have accepted Islam. They have accepted the guidance. And those who did not accept, rejected the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they are Ummatul Adda'wah. See, subhanAllah, see these beautiful concepts and terms. They are ummah, but ummah to da'wah. Ummah of da'wah. We have to take this Islam to them. We have to guide them. So this is the ideology. However, for Jews, this is not the case. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in another ayah, Surah to Ali Imran, ayah 75. وَمِنْ أَهْلِ الْكِتَابِ مَنْ إِنْ تَأْمَنُهُ بِقِنْطَارٍ يُؤَدِّهِ إِلَيْكَ وَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ إِنْ تَأْمَنُهُ بِدِينَارٍ لَا يُؤَدِّهِ إِلَيْكَ إِلَّا مَا دُمْتَ عَلَيْهِ قَائِمًا ذَلِكَ بِأَنَّهُمْ قَالُوا لَيْسَ عَلَيْنَا فِي الْأُمِّيِّينَ ليس علينا في الأمين سبيل ويقولون على الله الكذب وهم يعلمون الله سيس and among the people of the scripture, people of the book, is he who, if you trust and trust him with a great amount of wealth, he will return it to you. There are people who are good from non-Muslims, from Ahlul Kitab. They are trustworthy, they are honest, they are upright in their character. And among them is he who, if you entrust him with a single silver coin, he will not return it to you unless you are constantly standing over him demanding it. And there are people, they don't have character. Why? What is the reason of this behavior? There can be many reasons. But the main reason is, reflect on this. The main reason is, that is because they say there is no blame upon us concerning the unlearned. There is no blame upon us concerning concerning uh, the Ummiyin. Who are Ummiyin? Ummiyin, the Arabs. They would call them Ummiyin. Ummiyin, unlettered, unlearned. 
because they don't have revelation from uh, the heavens. We are people of the book. They would boast. We are learned people. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used the same title to rebuke them, to remind them of the trust and responsibility. You are Ahlul Kitab and this is what you do. You are Ahlul Kitab and this, these are your crimes. You are Ahlul Kitab and this is your behavior. You are Ahlul Kitab. So you should be better than others. You are Ahlul Kitab. You should be responsible. So both rebuking and reminding of the responsibility. They would say, if you entrust them with a silver coin, they would not give it back. Why? Because there is no blame upon us concerning the Arabs. Goyam. See, subhanAllah. We have to be honest with each other. We have to be upright with each other. The Jews, non-Jews, we can cheat them. We can kill them. We can abuse them. No problem. Because they are goyam after all. This is the meaning. Again, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, if you entrust them with a single silver coin, he will not return it to you unless you are constantly standing over him demanding it. This can be behavior of a Muslim also. A Muslim can also be dishonest and untrustworthy. But there would be other reasons. Greed or other reasons. But here, the reason which has been mentioned is that is because they say there is no blame upon us concerning the unlearned. And they speak untruth about Allah while they know it. Ummiyun uh, were the Arabs because their knowledge was oral tradition. They would not compile their knowledge. They would not write. And this lakab, this title has been given to the Prophet himself. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. an nabiyul ummi Ummi Prophet. So this has been mentioned as a title for the Arabs and they would say we don't have any blame. Why? What, aren't they human beings? Aren't they, 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 if you don't, if you if you abuse them, you, you consume their wealth, it will harm them. They are human beings. They are not animals. They would say they are animals. They are not human beings. We don't have any blame. We will be upright with each other, with the Jews. Goyam, they are as good as human beings. And this has been repeated in the Quran, in many verses. And also, for this reason, they would restrict guidance to them only. They would say, uh, those who are the only guided people are the Jews and the Christians. And for this reason, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has emphasized this important meaning in the Quran that you cannot, uh, you, you, you can never uh, engage with them or they will never be pleased unless you join them, you join their ranks. So, uh, engagement with different ideologies and religions is possible, coming to the common ground. As a Muslim, I can work with a non-Muslim in a company, I can, he can be my friend as long as I don't get involved in uh, the religious haram activities. He can be my colleague in the company, he can be my friend in the school, in the university, he can be a uh, fellow doctor, whatever. I can engage, we can sit, we can come to the common ground. Yani if we have a problem in our workplace, I can join hands with this non-Muslim and demand justice. We can unite for a particular cause which is good, this is possible. But with Jews this is not possible. Why? There is no common ground. Either you are a Jew or an animal, full stop. If you don't carry the same political idea, the same ideology, you are nothing. For this reason, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah Al-Baqarah, Ayah 120, وَلَئِنِ اتَّبَعْتَ أَهْوَاءَهُمْ بَعْدَ الَّذِي جَاءَكَ مِنَ الْعِلْمِ مَا لَكَ مِنَ اللَّهِ مِنْ وَلِيٍّ وَلَا نَصِيرٍ Allah said, And never will the Jews or the Christians approve of you until you follow their religion. There is no common ground. Say, indeed the guidance of Allah is the only guidance. If you were to follow their desires after what has come to you of knowledge, O Prophet, you would have 
against Allah, no protector or helper. As we said, Christians are different from Jews in ideology also. And Jews, they hate Christians because they, uh, for, th for them, Christians are idol worshippers. They worship human beings. They worship uh, Isa alayhi salam. They worship the mother of Isa, Maryam. So they're idol worshippers. Jews believe in only one God. But this God is the God of Jews only. Focused on Jews, biased for Jews, so on and so forth. Uh, so Christians traditionally, they are against Jews. And their God, Son of God, God incarnate was crucified by the Jews. So this is strong animosity. However, there is a group from the Christians in history who affiliated with the Jewish cause. That's why you see the West now is supporting the Jewish cause. Otherwise, the West traditionally has been Christian. And Christianity is completely against this uh, Jewish ideology. We'll come to that. We said in the previous discussion, Isa alayhi salam is very important because Isa alayhi salam was his ideology, his, uh, his being was a revolution against this Hebrew racialism. Militant, separatist, anti-universalism, the revolution was Isa alayhi salam. So Isa alayhi salam is very important. For this reason, we have this second coming of Jesus. And he will come and he will fight the Antichrist, the Messiah of the Jews, the Jal. So why, why is the West supporting the Jews then? There is a movement which is called Protestant movement. Protest, Protestantism, protest, Protestant movement, they believed in uh, returning back to the Old Testament. And Old Testament is the book of Jews. If you buy any Bible, any version, now we have two main sections of the Bible. The Old Testament, which is Hebrew Bible, revered by, respected by, and followed by Jews. And the New Testament, which is accepted by Christians only. Jews, they don't accept the New Testament because it is a revelation on Isa alayhi salam. So, Protestants, they, uh, they don't believe in the divinity of Jesus. They said, let us go back to the Old Testament, the original scripture, which is respected and followed by the Jews. And evangelist Christians who support uh, the Jews and the Jewish cause, they are from the same branch. So Christians traditionally, they are against uh, the Jews. For this reason, you saw in this conflict, in jihad, which is happening in Gaza, some tradi traditional, traditionalist Christian countries in uh, South America, some European Christian Catholic, Catholic countries, like Spain, they stood against. Uh, the state of Israel and some of them they even uh, they, they boycotted Israel they stopped all diplomatic relations with Israel because they are pure Catholic traditionally they are Catholic they are not Protestant so we should understand these matters all Christians they don't support Israel the state of Israel it is only a particular section of Christians who are extremist Christians. You can say they are also Zionist Christians. This term has been used regarding them. Zionist Christians, uh, evangelists, their ideology is very near to the ideology of the Jews, the, the Zionists. They are who support the uh, state of Israel. All Christians, uh, they don't accept this ideology. So this this is uh, this is in brief the race, racialism of the Jews. Now let us read more uh, from uh, the book Christian Ethics. We stopped at uh, the equilibrium and union between these two values: the value of being a human being and the value of this political idea. They are same in absolute equilibrium. This equivalence between the two values of population and political relation, the equivalence of the carrier, the Jew, 
with that of which he is the carrier, this idea of, of Zionism or racialism is precisely what sociologists call racialism. The race is never a purely chemical or biological idea. The race is not purely a biological idea. Belonging to a particular race is not always biological. Yani, uh, we, can't, we can't test the blood of everyone in the laboratory, as he says. So being from a particular race also means sharing the same ideology. Otherwise, Judaism is a very closed religion. People cannot uh, convert to, 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 to Judaism. However, they have revised uh, uh, these particular uh, concepts. They have revised and they have started to accept others, Goyam, into Judaism. But still, after they become Jew, they, they will not be like the original uh, Jews. So he says, Hebrew script, scripture, the Old Testament, the scripture of the Jews, and then they have its explanation, Talmud and others. You saw how Netanyahu, he quoted the, uh, the Hebrew Bible, the Old Testament, and the prophecies of Isaiah and other prophecies and other verses from the Bible to justify this genocide. He has clearly quoted it, and others have also quoted it. Even some Western leaders have quoted it. Hebrew scripture as record of Hebrew racialism. We said racialism is different from racism because racialism is an idea, ideology. When you believe that, all human behavior revolves around uh, the concept of race. Whatever you do as a human being, uh, socially, politically, economically, all affairs of human life, they revolve around race. That the whole of Hebrew and Jewish history is the story of this racialism. This is their problem. This is what uh, the this is the distortion which they committed. Musa alayhi salam was a Muslim. The Banu Israeli prophets they came with Islam. Allah subhanahu wa taala gave them a mission. Allah subhanahu wa taala made them a great ummah, and their mission was implementing the will of God, implementing the Sharia in the Promised Land. But they transgressed, and one of the main transgressions was. Uh, distor distortion in the original religion and coming up this up, uh, with this idea of racialism. We are the best nation and uh, the future of uh, our mission depends on the stability of this race. This was a problem. Uh, the whole of Hebrew and Jewish history is the story of this racialism. Has been contended by many from a variety of motives and point of views. The Jews whom, above all, it concerns, generally accepted the thesis that their scripture is theirs and only theirs. So we don't say Quran is only ours. We say Quran is an open book for all mankind. Quran has come for all mankind. Let everyone read the Quran and see, subhanAllah, in this conflict, how uh, people are coming to Islam. You must be following that by reading the book of Allah, subhanAllah. No philosophy, no higher thinking, profound discussions by just reading the Quran, the translation of the Quran, they're accepting Islam. And I tweeted about this. I said, the Palestinian blood has fueled this movement in the world. It will lead many to the guidance of Islam. And we will see that. But the scripture of the Jews is theirs only. The God is their God. The thesis that the scripture is theirs and only theirs that they have a perfect right to understand it as they please, since it was written in their language, Hebrew, by their ancestors and for their benefit. So we will not even accept the understanding of other people. Only we have right to interpret it. Only we have right to understand it. No one else can understand it. And this is how they distorted the scripture. This is also ra racialism. These are different manifestations of racialism. Okay. Since it was written in their language by their ancestors and for their benefit, that the only standpoint from which it can be properly it can properly be understood is that of Jewish history, their history, pure and simple, especially as the greater part of its narratives and poems treated of their history and was written for their edification, for their glorification. And if you read the Old Testament, they say this is uh, our scripture, 
It talks about our history, Jewish history. It has nothing to do with mankind. Okay? We, know, we say Quran has everything to do with every human being. Hence, their typical aversion uh, against this idea, the self-centeredness with which their scripture has been interpreted in a tradition that has remained rabbinic for ages. Yani only their rabbis must have heard this term rabbi. Rabbi means the Jewish scholar. How racist these rabbis are who are calling for genocide. We have seen a rabbi recently uh, on the social networking. He uh, claims he gave fatwa. He gave a verdict that it is permissible to rape the woman of Goyen. Now here Muslims because Arabs. It is permissible. It's okay. In war, it's permissible to kill children. It's permissible, permissible to rape women. It's permissible to kill animals. It's permissible to, uh, uh, to commit gen genocide. It's okay. It's okay. These are only the effects of a racialist view of man and the world to which the Jew, for the most part, has been addicted. A racialist view of man. Racialist with of man. They have been addicted to this. However, it would be a sad state if the history, whether political or cultural, of a people could be properly read and understood only by the members of that people or their descendants. Yani, you're not open to humanity. As people, as a legacy, civilization, you must be open to mankind so that everyone can assess your history, understand you, understand your legacy, appreciate it. It is a sad state if you say, no, my history is specific with me. It can be only appreciated and understood by me because I'm a Jew. They are not open, open to humanity. And they basically are separatists. They separate themselves from mankind. And this would, this would have had to be the case if the early history of a people were such that no facts could prove or disprove it as in the case of a myth. Even then, the myth itself, its genesis and advent and decay may be regarded as the factor of that people's consciousness enlightening us. If not about the early history of which the myth tells, at least about the later consciousness that is uh, mythologized. So he says here, uh, how would we differentiate if this is the case? How would we differentiate myth from actual history? If only a particular people can understand their history and no other human being has access to understand it and appreciate it, how would you differentiate a myth from actual history? So we know myth is something imaginary and myths would play a very important role in pre-modern world. People living in different parts of the world, they would believe in myths and these myths would have an important role in their life. In how would they view their life? How would they establish their social structure, their future. So myth is important. There is a very important treatise, small book, written by a contemporary uh, author, a great author of religion, Karen Armstrong. Famous, she is a very famous Christian author who has written some wonderful books. A Short History of Myth. I would recommend everyone to read this. So it is a short treatise, a short history of myth by Karen Armstrong. Because she also uh, writes against modernity. The reality based on only material things. She says in pre-modern societies, people would believe in myths and these myths would give meaning to their lives. Myth is a non-existent thing. 
So basically, when these Jews believe in a in an age in their history, how would we differentiate it from myth? So this is uh, what he says here, and then he says, yes, of course, we have uh, some uh, clear evidences to prove their history, like the evidence of uh, archaeology, which has been done in this area of Palestine and the surrounding areas. So they existed. We have some objective evidences for their existence. However, if you regard your history, yours only, no one else can understand it. So you are closing your door to every human being. You are confining yourself. So Dr. Ismail is more uh, interested in understanding the religious experience of Jews because this is a book of comparative religion. So he says, your religious experience is very... Uh, yani, it is not open to all mankind. It is racist and uh, separatist. Okay, So he says, even if you reflect on the Bible, now coming to the Bible, if you reflect on the Bible, you will see that the prejudice, the God of the Hebrews, the God of the Banu Israel, has shown bias in favor of a particular party. There are many stories in the Bible in which this bias is very uh, manifest. And the, the, the bias does not give any reason. For example, he says here, from the first human family in the God, Garden of Eden, the Garden of Paradise, among whose children God discriminated irrationally. So this is from the book of Genesis. He says in the Garden of Paradise, and of course this story appears in the book of Allah also. We have Adam salam and Hawa. Allah created Adam and from Adam Hawa, they remained in paradise. They were tested there. And then we have the sons of Adam, Habil and Qabil. Qabil killed Habil. Why? Because uh, Qabil was not sincere. He was not pious. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not accept his offering. And he became jealous because Habil was pious and Allah accepted his offering. Qabil became jealous uh, about Habil and eventually killed him. And this was the first uh, killing and crime which happened uh, in the history of mankind. That's why the Prophet ﷺ said in a famous hadith that every killing which happens till the last day, its sin is on Qabil. Subhanallah. Because he uh, started this crime. And he set the, the evil example for all mankind. So all sin, all ki uh, every killing which happens, uh, unjust killing and crime which happens till the last day, its sin is on Qabil. So God has shown, according to these scriptures, a bias in favor of one man, one family or one party. Because in the Bible, in the Genesis, the first book of Bible, it says that God accepted the offering of Habil and did not accept the offering of uh, Qabil without giving any reason. And Qabil was doomed. And God cursed him. So basically this is a bias without any reason. In the Bible you will not find any reason. However, if you read the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned the reason. This is the difference between a pure revelation from God and a distorted revelation. And he takes this, uh, these verses and this understanding to explain the racialist uh, ideology of the Jews. So from the first, from, from, from the creation of this universe, from the creation of mankind, till giving the, the mission of ruling the world to the children of Israel, Allah has shown bias, prejudice towards a particular race and a particular person. And this is in the story of Habil and Qabil. In the Quran, and if you go to Bible, this is in Genesis. Uh, this is the, the story of Cain and Abil, Habil and Qabil in Arabic is in Genesis 4, verse 1 to 6. 
Well, let me read it from the Genesis first and then we read it. We will read it from the Quran. This is the Old Testament. This is the Old Testament. If you want to study the Bible, the version is New Revised Standard Version. There are different versions. The famous uh, Bible, which is easily available, is the King James Version. So these versions, they uh, keep on changing. Uh, they remove some verses, they add the verses, so on and so forth. And this is very famous about the Bible. Uh, RSV Bible, Revised Standard Version Bible, is good because it contains commentary. It contains background. Before every book, it gives the background. Like the first book is Genesis. Uh, in the Old uh, Testament. So this uh, version will give the context of this book. What does it contain? And also the context of the verses. Okay. So... Here we have the Genesis. For example, introduction. Genesis meaning origin covers the time from the creation of uh, from the creation of this world to the descent of Jacob and his sons into Egypt. This book is generally divided into uh, primeval history, focusing on all of humanity, chapters one to eleven, and an ancestral history, focusing on Ibrahim, Abraham, and his descendants, chapter twelve to fifty. This is uh, the revised standard version. Let's go to our uh, the verses. We have Genesis. What did I say? Six. Genesis. Uh, yes. Genesis four, one to six. We have to update ourselves as Muslims. Look around. See the, the, the in the West, there are experts of Islam, Orientalists. We have Jewish experts. They know much about Islam. They distort our religion. They distort our legacy. And we, we don't know anything about the Bible. Now is the time. In our perpetual struggle with the with Ahlul Kitab till the end times. We must be aware. We must know our, our enemies. So Genesis 4. The story of Cain and Abel. So we have. Uh, uh, we have the verses. Now the man knew his wife Eve, and she conceived and bore Cain, saying, I have produced a man with the help of the Lord. Next, she bore his brother Abil. Now Abil was a keeper of sheep, and Cain a tiller of the ground. This is, I'm reading from the Bible, Old Testament. In the course of time, Cain brought to the Lord an offering of the fruit of the ground, because Cain was tiller of the ground. He was a farmer. So he brought to the Lord, to God, as an offering, uh, fruit of the ground and Abil for his part brought of the first links of his flock their fat portions and the Lord had regard for Abil and his offering but for Cain and his offering he had no regard, regard. he accepted God, Lord accepted the offering of Habil, Abil here and Lord had regard for Abil and his offering but for Cain and his offering he had no regard why? Why? Why this injustice? Why this bias? Why, why this prejudice? It does not explain. No reason. That's why Dr. Ismail says here, God has shown according to these scriptures a bias in favor of one man, one family, or one party. There is no reason. Bias. Why are Jews better than others? Why do Jews deserve to be humans and others are goyam, less human beings? Why? There is no reason. Because we belong to uh, this race. You belong to which race? You are from the descendants of Israel. Who is Israel? Is Yaqub. The father of Yaqub is Ishaq. And the father of Ishaq is Ibrahim. Who are the Arabs? Arabs are the progeny of the same Ibrahim salam, from Ismail. Now what is the difference? You are from Ishaq and the Arabs, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam including the Prophet, is from Ismail and their brothers. So your cousins, if you are truly the same Banu Israel, we said, we discussed about this. They claim to be, but this is contested. This claim is contested. Are they the are they same Banu Israel or 
they, their forefathers accepted Judaism. The Russian tribes, we talked about that. So if, for the sake of argument, we accept that you are the same Banu Israel, Arabs are your cousins, why are you fighting? Why are we better than Arabs? They, they are from Ibrahim and you are from Ibrahim. What is the difference between Ishaq and Ismail? They are both sons. They are both worthy sons of Ibrahim. Problem. Bias. Without any reason. No particular reason. Lord had regard for Abil and his offering, but for Cain and his offering, he had no regard. Cain was very angry. Of course, he would be angry because we are same. We are uh, brothers of the same father. And I also brought offering. Why have you rejected my offering? Cain was very angry and his countenance fell. The Lord said to Cain, why are you angry? <laughs> see, see the, <laughs> the uh, absurdness in the Bible. God is not, Lord didn't offer his, uh, accept his offering without any reason. And God was biased towards Abil and then God is asking Cain why are you angry why are you angry and why has your countenance fallen if you do well will you not be accepted and if you do not do well sin is lurking at your door its desire is for you and you must master it Cain said to his brother Abil let us go out to the field and when they where in the field Cain rose up against his brother Abil and killed him. Then the Lord said to Cain, Where is your brother Abil? He said, I do not know. Am I, brother's, am I my brother's keeper? And the Lord said, What have you done? Listen, your brother's blood is crying out to me from the ground. And now you are cursed from the ground, which has opened its mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. Because uh, he... Uh, buried his brother in the ground when you till the ground it will no longer yield to you its strength you, you will be a fugitive and a wanderer on the earth Cain said to, to, to the Lord my punishment is greater than I can bear today you have driven me away from the soil and I shall be hidden from your face I shall be a fugitive and wanderer on the earth and anyone who meets me may kill me then the Lord said to him no so again see absurd so if people find me they will kill me and I have been cursed God said no problem no so whoever kills Cain will suffer a sevenfold vengeance whoever kills now Cain Kabil he will suffer a sevenfold vengeance and the Lord put a mark on Cain so that no one who came upon him would kill him the Cain went away from the presence of the Lord and settled in the land of Nod east of Eden so these are verses from the Bible. Subhanallah. Now listen to the beautiful Quran. Same story. And purely rational, logical, without absurdity. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Ma'idah, Ayah 27. And Allah says, and recite to them the story of Adam's two sons. In truth, Bilhaq. There is no absurdity. There is no bias. There is no prejudice. This is Bilhaq. Bilhaq means hikmah, wisdom. When they both offered a sacrifice to Allah and it was accepted from one of them but was not accepted from the other. Why? Oh Allah, why didn't you accept from the other? Why didn't you accept from Cain? Why didn't you accept from Qabil? Allah says, before that, Allah says, said the latter, Qabil said, I will surely kill you. When the offering was not accepted from him, he became jealous and he said, I will kill him. Allah says, said the former. So Allah, uh, Qabil said, la, qala la aqtulannak. I will surely, verily kill you. Qala, what did Habil say? Habil said, 
well, you you must be rightful in killing me because I also don't know why didn't accept why, why didn't Allah accept it from you? Why did Allah accept it from me? We are both brothers. We are from the same father. We offered the same offering. I don't know why this bias. Habil did not say. Habil did not say that. Habil said, "Inna yataqabbalullahu min al muttaqin." Indeed, Allah accepts only from pious, from muttaqin, from righteous. Which means you are not righteous in this offering. You are not sincere. Subhanallah. One ayah, one ayah, three lines only. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives clarity in the story of Adam, the sons of two sons of Adam. And then Allah doesn't say, oh, you, you are cursed, but no one will be able to kill you. Anyone who tries to kill you will suffer a sevenfold vengeance, as in the Bible. Allah didn't say that. Allah says, فَطَوَّعَتْ لَهُ نَفْسُهُ قَتْلَ أَخِيهِ فَقَتَلَهُ فَأَصْبَحَ مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ Clear. And his soul permitted to him the murder of his brother. His soul encouraged him because he had polluted his soul. He became jealous. His soul encouraged him to kill his and murder his brother. So he killed him. Qabil killed Habil and became among the losers. Khasirin, he became among the losers in this dunya and in Akhirah. And the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did not give any excuse to Qabid. The Prophet didn't say, oh well, he was son of Adam. Allah eventually forgave him or whatever. The Prophet said, till the last day. This is justice of Islam. Justice applies on even the sons of the Prophet. The Prophet himself the Prophet ﷺ said, till the end times, every killing, its sin is on the hand, hands of Kabil. Okay, now listen to this. We, we read from the Bible, Genesis, and from Surah Al-Ma'idah. Now listen to what Dr. Ismail says here. He says, from the first human family in the Garden of Eden, among whose children God discriminated irrationally, to the exodus of from Egypt. Exodus, when Allah delivered them from the slavery of Fir'aun. This is called exodus. God has shown, according to these scriptures, a bias in favor of one man, one family, or one party. There are times when this bias is earned by virtue and, a, and good deed, as in the case of Noah, for example. But in most cases, the bias is irrational and groundless. Whether it is taken as, a, as the judgment of God or of the Hebrews upon themselves, the significance of the bias is the same. The Hebrew, this prejudice means to assert, is better than the non hebrew because he stands in a certain relation to his race, a relation whose value, the value of his existence per se, is declared equivalent therewith. Because of this bias, Hebrew believes that I am better than other human beings. Because of the absolute equivalence of the two values, the Hebrew esteems himself or God esteems him as standing above the humankind. See, this is what the Israeli ministers and leaders are saying. We are, we are Jews, Banu Israel. And Isa alayhi salam, Jesus alayhi salam came with a revolution. We'll come to that. He came, his ideology, his message was a revolution. Against this this uh, this uh, racialist ideology. So, because of the absolute equivalence of the two values, the Hebrew esteems himself, or God esteems him, according to them, as standing above the humankind, for whom he has coined the only word of its kind in any language, that is goyim or non-Jews. This is the in all religions you will not find. A word like Goyam. They don't have, no religion has this concept of people who don't belong to that religion, they are lesser humans or dehumanizing them. You will not find in any religion with the absurdity, with the falsehood in all these religions. You will not find. This is the only, only word of its kind in any language, Goyam, non Jews. Since the relation of which the Hebrew is the carrier is valueless without the carrier to whom it is indissolubly wedded. The intangible nature of it did not 
fail to produce in time a physical correlate to serve as an index of that relation and evidence of its existence. This is what is referred to as covenant in the flesh. In the Bible, the covenant which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, took from them. The covenant was basically, you will implement the law of God. The law which has come through the prophets like Moses, Musa alayhi salam, you will implement it in the promised land, Philistine. This is called covenant in the flesh. Why is it called covenant in the flesh? Because it is covenant with Banu Israel only. In the flesh means it is about these people only. Okay, so in the Bible, in Genesis 17, verse 13 to 14, it says, He that is born in thy house and he that is bought with thy money must needs be circumcised. Circumcision is, is a law in the Jews also. And my covenant shall be in your flesh for an everlasting covenant. And the uncircumcised man, child, whose flesh of his force, foreskin is not circumcised, that soul shall be cut off from his people. He had broken my covenant. Now this is the problem. Covenant is in the flesh. This is not a message or... That's why they are a cancer to mankind, humanity. Nazist ideology. So we are the best race. We have the best ideology. Everyone must be subjugated and we must rule the world. Yeah, this is this is not just ideology. This is the Mongol ideology. Right? Because this is the covenant in the flesh. No one can become like us. How good he tries, how noble he becomes, how yani, charitable and altruistic he becomes. He cannot become like us. A Jew criminal is better than a non-Jew noble person. Okay, So this is from the Bible. Covenant in the flesh, it is called. Covenant in the flesh. But if you uh, read the ayat about this covenant from the Quran, you will see a different perspective. It was not covenant in the flesh. I'm giving you this covenant irrespective of whatever you do. It is fixed in your flesh till the end times. Allah didn't say that. Allah said, you fulfill my covenant, I will fulfill your covenant. Subhanallah. Yani if you don't fulfill your responsibility, khalas. I will replace you with other people. This responsibility was given to the Ummah of Muhammad وسلم, after the Ummah of Banu Israel. So for example, so this is different from covenant in the flesh. Allah says in Surah Al-Baqarah, and other many verses, Ayah 40, يَا بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلَ اذْكُرُوا نِعْمَتِيَ الَّتِي أَنْعَمْتُ عَلَيْكُمْ وَأَوْفُوا بِأَهْدِي أُوفِي بِأَهْدِكُمْ وَأَوْفُوا بِأَهْدِي أُوفِي بِأَهْدِكُمْ وَإِيَّا يَفَرْهَبُونَ O children of Israel, remember my favor which I had bestowed upon you and fulfill my covenant upon you. Fulfill my covenant is you will implement Islam, you will implement the law of the prophets, you will obey them, you will not transgress, you will implement the will of God in the promised land, Philistine. And fulfill my covenant upon you that I will fulfill your covenant from me and be afraid of only me. This is not covenant in the flesh. Forget about that. This is a responsibility. You fulfill your duty, your responsibility, and I will support you. I'll be with you. I'm your Lord. If you don't fulfill your responsibility, you will be replaced by other people. So this is completely different from the idea of covenant in the flesh. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala clearly mentioned in many verses how they broke the covenant, they did not fulfill, they disobeyed their prophets, they killed the prophets, they, they, they committed all types of crimes and sins and transgressions. We don't need uh, evidences for that. So they reached a height of racialism, arrogance, to such a level that they started saying, okay, we are criminals, but even if we go to hellfire in the next life, 
we will remain in Haifa for only some days. <laughs> See the uh, uh, yani, audacity of, of these people. We are criminals, okay, fine. We don't have any shame in that. We don't regret being a criminal and, tra and transgressing the limits of God. And we know we will go to hellfire. We know that. But we will remain. Sons and daughters of God, covenant in the flesh. Problem. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Baqarah again, Ayah 80. وَقَالُوا لَنْ تَمَسَّنَ النَّارُ إِلَّا أَيَّامًا مَعْدُودَةً قُلْ اتَّخَدْتُ قُلْ اتَّخَدْتُمْ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ أَهْدًا فَلَنْ يُخْلِفَ اللَّهُ أَهْدًا أَمْ تَقُولُونَ عَلَى اللَّهِ مَا لَا تَعْلَمُونَ And they say, never will the fire touch us except for a few days. See the arrogance. Say, Allah says, say, have you taken a covenant with Allah? For Allah will never break his covenant. Or do you say, about Allah that which you, which you do not know. Do you have a covenant that Allah will not punish you even after your crimes and you will remain in hellfire for some days? You don't have a covenant. This is in the Bible, distorted covenant in the flesh. This is not a covenant. This is the reminder which the Prophet gave them. Come, wake, wake uh, up from your slumber, from the distortions. Lift the wheels. Then Allah gives the principle after this ayah. It's not about covenant. It's not about flesh. It's not a bias. It's not about prejudice from God. God is the most just. Al-Hakamul Adl. Remember. Remember. Yes, whoever earns evil and his sin has encompassed him, those are the companions of the fire. They will abide therein eternally. Whoever, khalas, Jew, Christian, Muslim, atheist, agnostic, whoever earns evil and his sin has encompassed him, he will remain, he will go to hellfire. But those who believe and do righteous deeds, he didn't say, Allah didn't say, but those who are from the family of the Prophet, those who are from the family of Ibrahim, those who are Arabs, those who are uh, Europeans, those who are from this race. No. But they who believe and do righteous deeds, those are the companions of paradise. They will abide there eternally. Halas. You may be an European, an African, uh, white, black, brown, whatever, pink, <laughs> whatever. From any race, from any ethnicity, you believe and do righteous deeds, you will enter Jannah. This is universalism of Islam versus separatist militant ideology of the Jews. That's why here he says, Hebrew scripture is regarded as a heavily edited, oft changed version of that divine Torah which God had entrusted to Moses, Musa alayhi salam. And the Jews, listen to this. And the Jews are regarded as those who gave up that divinely inspired pattern, and the, the actual wahi, the actual revelation, the actual message of Moses. Jews are regarded as those who gave up that divinely inspired pattern for the sake of tribalist self-seeking and assertion and the preservation of their race. This is the problem. So don't tell me, why are we not making peace with the Zionists in Israel? They also have uh, families. They also want to live. They don't want peace. If they leave this ideology, then we can have peace. But they don't want peace. They want Zionism is an expansionist ideology. It's a Nazist ideology. If you leave Palestine to them, if you leave Gaza to them, they will not stop there. They want greater Israel from river to the sea. And this is what their, what their flag depicts. They will move. They want Middle East. River to the sea is almost whole Middle East. They will not stop. Okay. So update yourselves. If you want to understand what is happening, you must know 
the Bible, the Zionist ideology, read some books about Zionism, particularly the book of their founder, Theodor Herzl, uh, The Jewish State, which is the ideological manual of their state. It is a brief treatise. You can finish it in, I think, one or two hours. Read about the Jewish identity, Jewish problem, the exile, and the, the, the Jewish uh, racialist uh, ideology. And also, what Quran says about Ahlul Kitab. The Prophet Sallallahu what he said in a hadith about the future of the Ummah, the future struggle of the Ummah with Ahlul Kitab. If you don't know these things, you cannot understand what is happening and what will happen in the Muslim world in future. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us understanding of these matters. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us understand the message of the Quran and the Sunnah and also give us strength intellectually, ideologically, materially uh, to confront the evil and the falsehood in our times. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from sincere students of his religion. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Help us serve his religion. Uh, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by his beautiful names and exalted attributes to cure the sick and wounded of the Palestine and to accept the shuhada, martyrs of Palestine and whole ummah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to cure our sick and to forgive all our dead. Ameen ya rabbal alameen wa sallallahu ta'ala ala nabi al-ummi. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.